Here's something new for this year, our new facial wall. We're very excited about it with two different face options. Iconic, number one, a little bit more of a contemporary look. And, and more rustic. one is rose mount. Looks like a ledge fit almost, like a natural stack stone. Beautiful okay. product. Here's the layout. You got the base core units, which have the grooves already manufactured in them. Single-sided core, so you can build structural walls, vertical or setback to, I don't know, 20, 30 foot tall. You have a double-sided version. And then you got the fascia system, so you can put whichever, you know what, forget it. Let's just show them. Let's build it live here on stage so you guys have an opportunity to see how this wall works. What do we got here on the ground, Rick? Big reveal. <laughs> so you can see we have our base blocks installed already. The base blocks are there to help line up the core units. There's two grooves that are manufactured into that area, so when you put the core blocks on top, it locks them into place. I'll okay. show you guys in the camera real quick how this works. You guys see the two grooves there? So there's two tabs on the bottom, and the tabs on the units, that core base unit, line up. So what are the chances that we get this wrong? There's no chance that we're There's gonna get no it. chance. You would have to literally break the block to do it wrong, which doesn't make any sense. So here we have a double-sided wall set up, right? So explain this to me. We set the double-sided units, we put the fascia units on. Yep, that's correct. Then and what, what do we, we have there on the end? We have a corner, we have one unit that's turned on a 90 degree to create our corner. Okay. And this is still going to be locked into place. So it will be attached. Now show us how you did that corner because TechoBlock has an innovative way that allows them to make those corners, right? Can you yeah. show them on the screen again? Yeah, it makes it very easy for you guys. You see that we have this groove molded in the whole way around the unit. So we can either split it or cut it. Makes so it we have simple. a groove on three sides, right? The bottom there isn't one, we'll show you that. And we can split it using a splitter like this one, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And put this in place okay, with this you particular one. We would use this lever to set it. Okay, once turn, turn it upside plate. down. No, no, wait a minute. I want the groove on top. Okay. Let's do the groove on top. And this is, uh, you call it like a car jack, right? This is a hydraulic jack. Yeah, it has a jack built into it. Okay. So you would just pull that back. Okay. Set that into the blade. Okay, so we have blade top and bottom. He has set the blade, and then he can pump it. And, and it'll eventually split and crack the unit. Yep. That's right. And we're going to have a return. So we have blade top and bottom, and that's going to give us a nice return on the split. Now show me on a manual splitter like this how it would work. Show them again on the screen. This is a single-sided unit. So again, you can see that groove that's cast into that block to aid in splitting. With the single-sided unit, it's on three different sides. Okay. Now that one, we had the groove on the top. This one, you're going to do it on the bottom. Yeah, we're going to flip it around on the bottom. Okay. You guys can hear this for a second. You can hear it lock into place. It locks into that it lower It engages. Plate. That's right. So then all we have to do is set our handle on top, right? Yes, sir. Tighten that down to the unit. Okay. Lock it into place. Okay. Let's see what the right angle is, Rick. Okay, you need to loosen it up. Loosen it up. Right about here. Okay, so now what he wants to do is put all his weight on it. Just put as much force as he possibly... No, nope, not quite yet. What? Score it a little bit. Put some pressure into it. Okay. Lift it up. Score it again. Do that a couple times. And then eventually put all your weight into it and break it. Okay, so we want to get that return to every split, correct? Let me ask you a question about these two styles of splitter. How much noise do they make? They don't make any noise. They don't make any noise at all. How much silicates do they release into the environment? No silicates. What are the chances somebody gets hurt on one of these devices? It's very unlikely. When are we going to need to replace the blade on these? Never. Let me tell you something else, folks. If somebody does get hurt on one of these splitters, take the handle off and finish the job. You follow me? Put them out of their misery. Now, the alternative would be, you want to pick it up real quick here? Here you go. I'll do it. Yep, I got it. The alternative would be, I got it, over here to set this unit down with your safety glasses, with your mason hammer or maul or sledge, and go across every unit. 
on all four sides and do that, not trying to split the block, but to get a good groove all the way around. About the fourth or fifth time, it will actually split. So this sucks. Get a splitter. It is way easier. Now, show us what we're doing with this wall, Rick. Okay, so we already built one row. We have core blocks, and we have the fascia units installed on top. Before we get started, I'll show you one of the units. We have what they call flats, and we have corners as well. This is one of the corner units that's been cut down. So smooth top. We've got the channel there that's going to fit into our core block, and then we have the corner on the side. There's left and right corners in the pallet. We just have to make sure that we're using the correct one. Okay. Now, let's line these up. You have two grooves. We're going to use the front groove because we're building a vertical wall. You want it to make sure you lock one side in and then bring it in to bring the other in place. Can't do it wrong. The tabs make sure that you do it right every time. Now, the clips are how much? Uh, they are free also. They're included in the pallet. Okay. And you guys should be very familiar with these. You've seen these with our Mini Krita system and a lot of our other retaining wall blocks. Okay, and we give you way too damn many of them. I don't know why. <laughs> you get plenty of clips. Don't worry about it. Okay? I think you need to be a little bit tighter than that. Clip goes on the end of every subsequent course. Now, this is an aesthetic feature of the landscape. It's a double-sided sitting wall. So in a double-sided sitting wall application like this, we're going to be putting a dab of glue on every course. Kids are going to be climbing on it, jumping off of it. We don't want any problems. So a little bit of space between those units is fine. But if I was building a structural retaining wall, vertical or setback, I'd be using the other blocks over here. And if I were doing that, I would build them tight because weight gives you strength in a gravity wall application. I think you got one more, Rick. Yes, sir. And then a corner. There you go, sir. You guys can see there's a handle built into this block also to make it easier to hold. So it's very simple to hold two of those at one time. With a double-sided block, it really doesn't matter what position it's in. You can see that we flip-flopped a couple here. Okay. And that ties them all together. The clip goes in there. Okay, they're a little bit loose over here. You want me to slide them down a little bit? No, I think we're okay. Okay, good. And here's your corner. And then let me give you your small corner. Now this is cut already, just like the other one. So we're breaking our bond. Now I know you have a cut unit here because we want to go with a half bond laying pattern, right? Yes, yeah, so correct. Let's start so we're going to put the cut, cut on the other side. On the other side. Okay, and this is the first stringer, so show them that on camera so they can see it. So here's the stringer unit again, sold separately from the corners, but this is done straight. Show them the face. Straight runs. Show them the face nice. Okay, and the grooves on top, we're using. Here's the grooves on top, and you can see that there's two sets of grooves because this is a structural wall also. When we build it single sided, we can actually build it in a setback. That's right. Now, Everything is packaged with corrugated plastic to protect them. All of the packaging at TechoBlock has a recycled content and is recyclable. We are conservationists like you are, so we keep the environment in mind. Here's another stringer. Okay, here's your corner. Okay. Another stringer. You should have one more stringer there. Yep, I, that's exactly what I have. Okay. And then we're going to start building the pillar. Okay, and we're just going to glue and cap that, and that's going to secure everything, right? Yes. Sir. So explain to them what we got going here. I know you got some of these block in place, but I'll let's... take one off so you guys can see real quick. But for that first course of that pillar, we recommend building it solid putting four of these single-sided units down, and then splitting four units to make a solid base for the pillar. Okay, do we need to do that all the way up? No, we don't. We do it in the first row, then we can offset or stagger each one of those rows of pillars, and that's going to lock all of our blocks into place. And that gives us a good solid base and keeps about a six-by-six six opening so we can run a post down through there if we want to. So your clips are already in. You're half-bonding that. And then we can start 
with all corners now because we're building a pillar. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so we started with what? All left hand? We had all right hand corners, so we're going to need left hand corners to build this. Okay. So you just want to make sure that you flip flop every single row. So we have all of our right corners. Now we're putting in a whole row of left corners. Now we set them aside, right, Rick? And my advice to you would be to do the same. By separating the lefts and rights, we have the ability, there you go, we have the ability to move very quickly. So I'm going to stage my material to build my pillar. You're going to need more clips too, right? Yes, sir. Four more. And then you're going to start with your block. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So these all have the tab on them. And so we're again, we're locking in that face, dropping it down into place, and then we slide our pin in the side. Okay. And we're going again with a half bond, right? So we're breaking those units in half. These are the structural units. These are the units we would use for a gravity or a soil stabilized application. Yep, slide that in, I think. Okay, there you go. They don't have to be touching, but there's your last piece for that row. Okay, there you go, sir. And that ties that in. Would I use a dab of glue here? Yes, absolutely, because kids are going to be climbing on it, and I don't want to have any issues. Now, what do we got next, Rick? Now we're going to switch over to right side corners. Right side corners. Okay, you ready? Again, left, right, left. All right. There you go. This is the rose mount texture, okay, which is the more rustic of the two, the stacked stone kind of appearance. We do have the iconic also. You guys can see it out in the hallway on the podium. Yeah, the first more picture. contemporary, right? Oh, I got okay. ahead of Those myself. Okay, you need clips again, right? Yes, sir. I got one here. I just need three. All right. Everybody hear that? Yes, sir. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Make me feel old sometimes. And I'm so young. I need a clip on this side. I love these handles built into the back. They can't slip out of your hand. That is a nice feature. Again, recycled content and recyclable, all the packaging at Teco. We're very proud of that fact. Even the clips that we use in the wall have a very high recycled content. Anything we can do to conserve, we're going to do. Okay, last one. And then we can go with our caps, right? Yep, we have the Raffinado cap. Why don't we start millimeter. with this one on the wall? Okay. Go that way. Set this one on the wall. This does have the drip edge built into it, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Packaged with corrugated plastic between them. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Oh, sorry. You got ahead of me there, buddy. Buddy, buddy. We'll just put two on this wall. We'll keep it open so you guys can come up during break and take a look at it. Okay. Check the system out. Absolutely. Now let's use the same ones. We could put a full pillar cap on here, but Pete and I did not feel like lifting up a 400-pound <laughs> cap. So. No, Pete and I did not feel like doing it. Is absolutely correct. Last one, Rick. Okay. Now, if you want to put the garden mark turf in front of there, okay. I will get what we need to finish this job off. Okay, Rick, you ready? Yes, sir. How do we celebrate a job well done? Beer and a shot of fireball. Hey, cheers. <laughs> Everybody give Rick a round of applause, please. Absolutely. Very cool wall system. Very easy to work with. Take advantage of it. There's our core base units. We would still excavate, classify, amend, and compact the subgrade, put a fabric in, and build a base. This would go on that. Here's the core units put in. These are the double-sided units like we did. Again, those grooves lock them into place, and we turn that corner unit 90 degrees. These are the tabs, right? These tabs 
lock into place. You cannot do it wrong. It is impossible. Here's our filled up. We have our first row in and the first row of that pillar also, which we recommended building solid. Right, and you see those half pieces installed there. The next course, tabs are lined up. Second course is, and then you see the pillar, we have those openings. Would you fill those with clean stone? Not really. I don't know why you would. Water's going to get in there. It's going to bring stains out of it. It's not even worth doing. Don't do it. Next course. Yep, last course there. Then we have our pillar going in and the turf installed up front. Absolutely. Very cool. So a complete system and the only facial wall system in the world that meets ASTM 1372. It is the only one that is a true dry cast retaining wall with a wet cast veneer, period. There isn't another. So please take advantage of it this spring. Next ever is something else that we are very excited about in 10 by 10, 10 by 20, and 20 by 20. You can see this out front in the podiums. Not only does it have that 15, 25, 35 degree texture, the color goes in the same pattern as the texture. It looks like natural marble. This here, is the most beautiful thing. Here's how I describe it. I want you to try to remember this. It is a concrete paving slab with the DNA of marble. Think about it that way. There is not another product like this in the world, and you can see it right out in the hall. It'll knock your socks off. Industria, now in HD2, and we have a couple new sizes that we are offering, like this three by three that is four inches thick. You can put them in like this. <laughs> I lay them one-handed. You guys are probably going to need equipment. They're 500 pounds. You need equipment, okay? That's what customers demand. That's what we're bringing to the marketplace. 12 by 36, 24 by 36, and now that monster in 36 by 36. Absolutely. The Pacific three-piece and the coping product, inch and 316 thick. Don't miss this opportunity, folks. Steps, stoops, landings, liner pools. We can now renovate them and make them look awesome. Hydra. Hydra. This is the evolution of our inflow product, that kind of commercial permeable pavement now in a pattern that can be machine laid into a half bond pattern. And if you're thinking, what does TechoBlock know about mechanically laid layer by layer pavement? Here's a project we did a few years back with a contractor. This was 85,000 square feet of our pure product installed right along the Delaware River. Layer by layer, row by row construction, 85,000 square feet. It was a Teco Pro who did the job, and we learned a lot from it. We learned what we could do from a manufacturing standpoint to help you mechanically lay products with some of the machines outside from PaveTech and PaveTool. So pretty cool installation, 85,000 square feet along the Delaware River. So we learned a lot from this. Did we take that information and run with it, or did we keep learning? We keep learning. That's right. So now with Key Landscaping, one of our Teco pros from New Hampshire, did I pronounce that correctly? I think so, yeah. Is it New Hampshire? That's how they say it. <laughs> so, it's something like, yeah. We did 100,000 square foot of Aquastorm at a commercial parking lot, and we did it with our turf style pavement, 100 millimeters thick. So we learned a lot from that. We took all that we learned and we applied it to the Hexa product. So a great product, eight by 12 by four inches thick for mechanical installations. Tell them more. If you want to learn more about our permeable pavement systems, go to the YouTube page, do a search for permeable pavement and see all kinds of videos that, that explain the whole process. My favorite is this animation. If you're dealing with HOAs, municipalities, townships, show them this video and they're going to understand permeable pavement and its benefit. Let's talk about urban bonfire, Rick. Yep, new partnership from TechoBlock. These outdoor kitchens can be installed on top of existing patios, roof decks, existing decks, can be installed anywhere. Absolutely, marine grade aluminum, and they are powder coated, so they will look just as beautiful the day you install them as 20 or 50 years from now. Lots of features, lots of elements. Tell them about the countertop. Decton countertop from Spain. It's stain resistant, UV light resistant, doesn't get hot in the sun, and antibacterial as well. It is everything. So you can get very, very dark colors, and you can lean on them in the summer without burning the skin off your forearm, which sucks. We don't want people doing that. The Heston components, we can use them, and they come in natural gas and in propane. Do anything you want. All the doors, drawers, trash cans, color options are available from Urban Bonfire and Tackle Block at your local authorized Dealer, comes in 87 inch, 111 inch, adds that refrigerator or cabinet, 
132 inch with the side burner and with the refrigerator? Absolutely. That's the full Monty, right? Full Monty 132. Available April 2020. These are great installs. We're going to talk about them in the owner's manager's conference for a few minutes. 2020 contractor program. Yep, number one being the sample booklet program. If any of you guys saw this coming in, we're super excited about this. It is the evolution of samples. It's there to help your sales calls and to make you look more professional. People are tactile. They want to touch it. Does that make sense? So at a kitchen table, how are you going to do that? You're going to do it just like this. You're going to open them up on the table. You're going to let them touch them. You're going to let them see them. You're going to walk them outside in natural light. You're going to show them those colors. You're going to narrow their selection down. Then they're going to go to their local Tekel Block dealer. They're going to take their shoes and socks off, and they're going to walk on it barefooted. You follow me? This is where it all starts. This is where you set the hook, get them excited, then they're going to go to the dealer to make their final selection. So make sure that you talk to one of the men in black. Where are they? They're around the room. They are waving at us right now. Get with one of them because they are limited. So if you want one, you better get one quickly. Teco Pro, we have the Pave Now Pay Letter Program. So a financing program for Teco Pros. If you are not a Teco Pro, well, you need to talk to us about becoming one because financing, it's a pretty big deal. 